We believe that the use of the Living Collection to support research and conservation is one of the very best uses we can make of the collection. And our job in horticulture is to try to bring together the best possible collection we have given the resources we have. But it is the case that not every single plant in the collection is used for research, much as not every single book in a library is used by the readership. But what we need to do is to try to make sure that every plant is of potential to be used for research, so we have all the associated data. Now, even in the Arboretum and the wider area of the garden, those plants do have the potential because we have all the associated data. But in the glass houses, we have a really strong focus on research and virtually all the plants are being used in active conservation and research projects. Here at the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh, the Begonia family is one of our research groups and we use it for this purpose because it's one of the biggest genera of flowering plants and it allows us to answer lots of questions about the origins and evolution of tropical diversity. So here in the collection we've got about 400 species from across the tropics which means we don't always have to go to the tropics to do our research, the tropics is here waiting for us in the glass house. When maintaining the research collections, we want to make sure these plants look good all the time. The scientists often use plants to be in full growth for DNA extraction or in flower for identification. We have to keep the plants growing and actively growing all year round. We do this by regular watering and regular potting. The African violet family, or the Gesneriaceae, is one of the biggest research collections, with 4,000 plants collected from the wild most of which have been collected by staff at the Royal Botanic Garden, Edinburgh. It's a tropical family of mostly herbs and shrubs, so they're grown in the research glasshouses, with a few on public display. The Living Collection underpins all of our scientific research on this family, particularly taxonomy, phylogenetics and developmental genetics. The research glasshouses contain a lot of new species, most of which have been described from the collections here. Often when plants are collected for the first time, they're not flowering or fruiting, and it's only when they start flowering here that we're able to confidently describe them as new. Watching in detail and recording how plants grow and develop is only possible with a living collection, and using new tools, we can now identify the genes that are causing these changes. The living collections at the garden give me access to plants from around the world. I'm using these plants to provide DNA samples to see if I can reconstruct a family tree of begonias. This work will allow me to see how begonias have spread across the tropics worldwide and become such a diverse group of plants. We've been carrying out research on conifers for more than a century. Some of that research has been on the classification of conifers, but more recently we've been carrying out molecular research for the conservation of conifers. But also we grow conifers for conservation, not only here in the garden, but also we have an impressive network of over 250 sites where we grow threatened conifers for their long-term conservation.
Here at Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh, we're also using these living collections to look at the DNA and how that relates to how plants um, respond to drought. And that's really important when you consider the big climatic changes that we're, the society is having to deal with today. Another thing that's very important about the living collections is we can use them to explain to the public the importance of our research and the importance of these plants um, in the, the whole ecosystem and how they fit in 